Hi there. I'm Bruce Maples, chair of the Kentucky Democratic Auxiliary, and in this course, we're going to talk about thinking about running for office. So if you're considering doing that, this is the perfect course for you before you make up your final decision. So what are we going to talk about? Well, in this course, we're going to cover why are you thinking about it, first of all. We're going to talk about what offices are out there because you really do need to look at all of them and decide which one is the best fit for you. We're going to decide if you should be a candidate or not, help you decide that. We are going to assess your chances, give you some pointers about that. If you've run before, we want you to evaluate your past campaigns, obviously check with your family, and then when you've done all of these steps, decide and make your commitment. So let's begin with, why are you thinking about running? And I want to encourage you to give yourself time to really think through this. Really sit with yourself and say, okay, why am I trying to do this? So there are some possible answers uh, that many people would tell you is why they ran for office. One is that they're angry or disappointed with the current representation. They don't like how they're being represented in Frankfurt or in City Hall or in Congress or wherever the case may be. That's a perfectly legitimate reason to get into the game and run. Another reason would be that you think you can really do a good job at it. It's not enough, really, to be upset with who's there now. The question is, can you do it any better? And that's an important thing to think about. Another possibility is that you want to give back to your community. This is, after all, called public service. And so we really want to think of this as a way to serve the greater good. Uh, maybe you want to have a career in politics. And before you say, well, that's a really bad answer. No, it's not. There are people who choose politics as a career, just like people choose other careers. And they do it because they think they'll be good at it. They want have all these other reasons about giving back. And they don't want to just run for one office. They want to think about really doing this maybe for the rest of their lives. So that's perfectly legitimate to sit and say, I want to do this because it's what I really want to do with my life. And then there's needing the attention. And I put this one on here because if some people are honest with themselves, this is one of the reasons they're running. They want the attention or the power or the control or whatever the case may be. I am afraid that if that's the case, they're going to be disappointed in the end because that's not really the best reason to run. So here are some reasons you might think through, and I really do encourage you before you do anything else to think through why are you running. So let's talk about what offices are out there. Now, we're not going to talk about every office because that would take a long time. I'm simply going to point out how many there are at various levels. So in a city, there is normally a mayor. It could be a council form of government or a commissioner's form of government. Uh, and then there is a board of education, which is usually a separate uh, piece. It's not tied into the mayor and the city council. Uh, these are all possibilities, local possibilities. Some of them are full-time jobs. Some of them are definitely not full-time jobs, and you have to think about that. In the county, there are just a gob of offices that you can run for. There's the county judge executive, which is not really a judge. It's the senior executive officer in a county. There are commissioners and clerks and attorneys. As you look at this list, I would encourage you to also remember that some of them are legislative offices, some of them are executive offices. Some of them are really administrative offices. And then when you have constable, that's a form of a law enforcement office. And so you really need to think, do I want to pass laws and do that kind of thing? Do I want to run a big office? Do I want to be an administrator over a team? What's my interest? What are my things that I'm good at? So on and so forth. Different people will be attracted to different ones of these offices. I will also note that if you are really thinking that you want to do this for a while, it's not a bad idea to start with what would be considered a lower level office uh, and work your way up. Uh, some of these do require special skills, but it's sometimes the case that you can start with one of these, build a name for yourself, especially get your feet wet in the whole idea of campaigning, and then maybe move on to another office. And of course, some of these will step up naturally to state representative or even Congress. 
At the state level, you have all the state offices that I'm sure you're familiar with. I don't need to go through all of these. Some of them you may not be as familiar with, for example, Auditor or Commissioner of Agriculture. All of them are important. And then, of course, there are the legislative offices of being a state senator and a state representative. Uh, all of these are good ones to consider. Remember that, that the first set are all full-time jobs, but state senator and state representative are part-time jobs. So you can't count on them for, to be your entire uh, salary or living. Then, of course, there are the judicial offices from the Supreme Court all the way down. One of the interesting things about Kentucky is that our judicial system is not based on county or even congressional district. It is its own entity with its own districts and set of uh, divisions and so on and so forth. And the other thing is that some of these really do need a law degree and even lawyer experience would be really good. But something like circuit court clerk is largely an administrative office and usually runs a large team of employees. So again, you need to think about that. All right, so let's talk about deciding. And the very first thing that you really need to think about is what do you enjoy? Uh, I enjoy researching policy. I enjoy thinking through the implications of, of laws and statutes. And so I would be very comfortable in a legislative role. I'm not as happy doing day-to-day -day administration and working with numbers and so on and so forth. I can do it, but it's not necessarily what I would enjoy. So think through what kind of work, if you could design your own job, what kind of work would you enjoy? The next thing is, can you take advice? Uh, you really do need to spend some time talking to people who have been involved in this work and learning what it's about and also taking advice from them about how to run your race, how to serve in the office, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, there are people who get into politics who are, to put it uh, gently, somewhat thick-headed and stubborn, and those do not make the best candidates, nor do they make the best representatives or elected officers because they can't take advice. So you really need to be honest with yourself about that. Can you deal with a tax? Uh, it does not help to have thin skin and be in politics, particularly some of the more public offices like state rep or state senator or governor or any of those. Depending on the race you're running, you will probably be attacked, and some of them will be unfair, and some of them will be maybe outright lies. And you have to decide, can I deal with that? Do I have a thick enough skin to get through that and not overreact or maybe not even react at all? Can you ask for money effectively? I can't emphasize this enough. If you cannot put aside your pride and whatever else and approach many, many people asking for money, then you're not going to be successful. Uh, we all joke about dialing for dollars, but it's a real thing, and it's part of running for office. We'd all love to say that it'd be nice if the government funded all our campaigns, but it doesn't, and so you have to figure that out. You need to be honest with yourself about, can I do that work? And along with that, can you knock doors effectively? Now, I'm using the phrase knocking doors, which is what you would do in a um, local race. Uh, you're not going to go knock doors across the state if you're running for a uh, United States senator. But can you meet the public? Are you comfortable in crowds? Can you work a room? Can you introduce yourself to people? And can you listen to them and really make them feel important and seen and special? If you are a wallflower, if you are somebody who really does not like to be in crowds, it's going to be hard. Uh, I have known of one particular candidate who really hated getting out in the field, and this candidate lost, and not because they weren't qualified. In fact, I think they were eminently qualified, but they were horrible at getting out and meeting the people. And so you really have to think about that. It's not the only skill, but it's a really important one. Are you a good manager and a good leader? Depending on the size of the race you're running, you may have a large team. You will at least have a campaign manager and a finance manager and a few other people like that. And then you'll have volunteers. Are you able to work with people? Are you able to be a good leader and a good manager? Are you able to be detailed enough to run things? Are you also good at delegating? Can you let other people take care of their things? And are you okay with that? You need to think through that skill if you're going to do this. 
And then finally, have you built a plan? I, I cannot tell you the number of people that I've spoken with who want to run for office. And then you say to them, well, uh, what does the district look like in terms of votes and so on and so forth? Well, they haven't looked. Uh, what's your budget? Uh, well, we haven't thought about that. These are all things you have to do. Basically, you are starting a small business that's going to last for nine months to a year or whatever the case may be. It is like that. You have to have a business plan. You have to think through what you're going to do. You have to have a plan for your budget. You have to think about where you're going to raise that money. You're going to have to think about field work and getting out in the field. All of these are things that we will train you to do later once you decide to run. But I really want you to think about the fact that you need to have a plan, at least the basics of a plan, before you decide to run. So now let's talk about your chances. Uh, people don't like to talk about this because, let's face it, when you decide, when you're thinking about running for office, there's a little bit of stars in your eyes and you're dreaming about what it could be like to be elected and so on and so forth. Well, OK, let's take the time to really assess what's going on. So the first thing to ask is, how competitive is your district? Is it um, evenly split? Does it elect Democrats or Republicans back and forth? Is it really red or really blue? Uh, if it's one or the other, if it's really blue and you're running as a Democrat, your main election is going to be the primary for the most part. And so you have to think about that. If it's a really red district and you're running as a Democrat, you've got a serious slog ahead of you. There's nothing wrong with running. In fact, we encourage people to run in districts that may not look winnable for two reasons. One is to get the experience, and two is to get your name out there. And then, as one person has said, you never know what might happen. Your opponent might suddenly drop out of the race a week before the election. You can't count on that. But what you can do is say, this is something I want to do long term, and I'm willing to put the effort in and see what happens. And if I get close, maybe next time I can win, which has happened more times than we can tell. So how competitive is your district? How do you decide that? Well, obviously, you go pull past election results. Uh, depending on the level of the race, you either get these from the state board of elections or you get them from your county clerk or the secretary of state's office or wherever. But you also want to look at races at other levels. There is one person that I know of right now as I'm recording this who is thinking about running for state representative. And the district that uh, they're considering running in currently has a Republican in Frankfurt representing it. But in the recent gubernatorial election, the district went for Andy Bashir uh, rather healthily. So is there a possibility that there are votes out there that you can get that aren't obvious on the basis of just the past elections? So you want to look at elections at all sorts of levels. You also want to consider, was it a presidential year or an off year? Those are very different years for races, and you want to look at all of those and then think about 2024, which is an election year for president, and so it's going to be a big turnout. You want to think about all of that. When you look at those results, can you decide or can you see a clear base for each party? So Republicans, even in off years, turn out this many people in this district. Democrats, even in off years, turn out this many people. What's the base? So then what's the difference? Uh, how many more voters were there than just the base? So are there swing voters? Can you count on the fact that maybe you can move some people to your side, even though they, even if they didn't necessarily vote for your party in the last election? These are all important analysis things that you need to do. Now, if you decide to run, you will want to get somebody who knows field and who knows uh, voter analysis and really dig into these numbers. But for now, we're just talking about getting a rough idea of what we're looking at. Again, if it looks really bad for your party, that doesn't mean you shouldn't run. It just means you should go into it with your eyes wide open. So let's talk about this. Do you have one or more of the big three? When I first started thinking about running many years ago, I went to the chair of our county party and I said, I'm interested in running. And it was pretty much like this discussion we're having now. He was like, well, do you know what you want to run for? No, I just want to run. And he said, well, Bruce, to run for office, you need one of three things, and they are name, money, or story. And he looked at me and he said, and you don't have any of the three, so probably you shouldn't run. 
Uh, fortunately, I ignored his advice at one point and did run for Metro Council here in Louisville. But I did not have name. There weren't many people who knew me. I certainly didn't have a great story. I was just an everyday citizen. And in the end, I didn't have enough money. So how are these related? Well, if you have a lot of name, you know, if people know you, you can often raise money. And that makes a difference. If you have a great story, you can often raise money. Uh, a great example of that is Amy McGrath. She had a wonderful story. And so when she rolled into the electoral world with that opening video, which was amazing, she immediately started raising money off of that because it was a great story. And as a result of having a great story, her name got known, and then she could raise money. Now, you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't have name. I don't have money. I don't have story. What do I do? What you do is you raise a lot of money and you do that to get your name out there. Uh, in my race, the biggest mistake I made was not raising enough money to do enough mailers. Uh, that was the key issue for me. And so you've got to think about that. Now, if you do have name, if you're well known, uh, you're a coach, for instance, in your small town or your big town. You are already an elected official. You have a business, a well-known business, and it's got your name on it and so on and so forth. These are all things that can help get your name out there. Or you have a great story. Uh, you took yourself through school on your own. You're the child of a single parent or whatever the case may be. All of these are good things that can help you uh, get out into the public and get your name in their minds. So think about these three things and decide, you know, how you're going to deal with that. How involved are you in your community? One of the things that is really important is some people who run have no volunteer efforts. They are not connected to any clubs. They don't go to a church. They're not involved in their PTA. They're just not involved. And if their opponent is in all of those things and known by all those people, that's a, that's a problem right off the bat because their name is known and yours is not. So how involved are you in your community, which is going to lead to some other things we're going to talk about in the future. All right, so here's one of the reasons that you want to know how involved you are, which is how many people can you call on to support you financially and do they have the money to do so? We hate it. We hate the fact that a lot of our races come down to just plain old money, but they do. And if you are one of these people who has lots of friends, but they're all living paycheck to paycheck, they can maybe give you $20, that's a problem. How many people can you call on that can actually support you significantly? Now, it may be that you know lots of people, and that's great. And you can start off by just raising all sorts of money from them, and that gives you a good base to go on forward with. If you do not, then you're going to have to figure out, how am I going to raise all this money, and who am I going to speak to about it? That's important. And then finally, or almost finally, is there anything in your background that could affect your campaign negatively? Now, Let's be honest. We all have things in our background probably that could come out and embarrass us. Uh, but you have to think about, okay, how far, how long ago was it? How big a deal was it? Is it something that I can explain calmly and carefully if I'm asked about it? Uh, or is it something that just is going to knock me out, you know, immediately? Think through that. Uh, depending, again, on the level of the race you are running, uh, some people may do op research on you, opposition research. They may start digging into your past life every way they can. In fact, there are companies out there that are paid to do just that. So you need to think through that and be ready with answers if any of those come up. And then finally, do you have the time? Uh, one of the reasons that independently wealthy people often run for office is that they have the money so they don't have to work a day job and they can just spend all their time running for office. There are people who are like uh, lawyers, for instance, often run for office because their time is their own. They can adjust their case schedule and make time in their schedule and so on and so forth. If you have a eight to five job, uh, unless you're planning on quitting your job or taking a leave of absence or whatever, you're going to have to do all your campaigning at night and on the weekends. And you've got to think through that. I did that. I had a day job and I campaigned every night and every weekend. And it took quite a bit of, out of me in, in terms of doing that. Having the time to run, to really run, 
is important. So you've got to think through that. All right, let's talk about your past campaigns. If you don't have a past campaign, then you can ignore this slide, obviously. But if you have run in the past, did you win or lose and why? And be honest. I mean, I can tell you I lost because I didn't raise enough money to do enough mailers to get my name out there. I think that if I had done that, it might have been closer than it was. Uh, as it was, I knocked, what, 6,000 doors in my little district, and I won most of the districts where I knocked doors. But uh, there were districts that were the houses were ridiculously far apart, and I couldn't have knocked those effectively, and I needed to do mailers, and I didn't have enough money. That's why. So evaluate your past campaigns and say, okay, what happened? Did I not listen to my advice? people? Did I not hire a campaign manager? Did I not do a good job of fundraising? Uh, did I not knock enough doors? Did I not go to enough events? Was I badly prepared for a debate? Whatever the case may be. Look through those and be honest with yourself about what happened. Now, check with your family. And I probably should have put this first, but I'm going to put it last to really emphasize it. Running for office, I'm just going to read this to you. Running for office requires large amounts of time and energy and that will take that time and energy away from your family. Make sure they know this, that they understand how, just how big it's going to be and that they are actually supportive of you doing this. I would encourage you to ask them not for permission, but for blessing. They need to be looking at you going, yes, we are behind you 100%. We will put up with whatever we have to put up with. We will clean the house. We will do the dishes. We will mow the lawn. We will fix things. We will take care of our food. Whatever they have to do to take care of things and let you go do this for nine months or ever how long it might be. It is going to take a huge amount of energy and time, and you just need to be prepared for that, and your family needs to be prepared for that. Uh, everybody from your significant other to your children, if they are living at home or not, other family members, and anybody you care for, you're going to have to make sure they understand this is what's involved. And then finally, make your commitment. Ultimately, this is up to you. If somebody's twisting your arm, that works for a while, but it won't work three or four months in when the person who twisted your arm is nowhere to be seen. This is up to you and no one else. You need to think through that carefully, and in the, in the end, it is your decision. You need to realize there will be times when the campaign is not fun or not pleasant, and you've got to have a really firm commitment in those times. And there are going to be times when you're really tired of it. I mean, I loved campaigning. I loved knocking doors. It was large fun. I had a great time doing it. And even so, I got tired of it. I, there were times when I was just like, oh man, I've got to go back out again tonight. So you're going to get tired of it. So you've got to have that commitment. Only a solid see it through commitment. And I want to emphasize that. You've got to go into this with the thing of, I'm going to go to the finish line. I'm going to campaign right up to the end. I'm going to not give up. Uh, it doesn't matter what the polls say, so on and so forth. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to see it through. And only that will get you to the finish line. Now, now, we've gone through all of this. If you're still sitting there thinking, yeah, I want to do this. I think I can do this. I think I can do this well, and I'm ready to give it a try. If you can make that commitment, then take the plunge. Run for office. Get your signing papers filled out. Get your witnesses. Go file your papers. And if you do that, come back to the Kentucky Democratic Auxiliary website or YouTube channel after you file in January, and we will have more courses for you there on how to run your campaign. Good luck and stay in touch.